Time for some Chris fix from this to this. Hey there guys, how you doing? Uh, this video I'm gonna be doing some uh, overview and kind of an update on what I've been doing on the off-road lawnmower. I had a great time at Busco Beach. Uh, if you watch the cars and cameras video, I'm in the video. I found one of the little bags, which is really awesome. If I go back next time, I'm good chance I'm gonna take the off-road lawnmower because I think it'll do pretty good, especially after a couple of things I've done to it. So let me show you that now. So the first thing you can kind of notice on the outside is that I painted a star on the top and on the sides. There's one on the other side as well. And the reason I did that is because, uh, for those of you who don't know, the theme of this mower is based on the Willie Army Jeeps from World War II. The simpleness and the reliability is the biggest thing, and that's why I consider it a Jeep, even though it's not an actual Jeep, but whatever. Everybody has their thing they make their lawn mowers into. I think it looks pretty cool. Let me know in the comments on what you think. So if you look under the hood, everything for the most part is pretty much the same. Uh, you may notice this. Uh, this was just bright silver, and I kind of wanted to get rid of it, so I painted it uh, some army green ahead laying around which is kind of what i use to paint the front part of the headlight another big change is i got rid of the auxiliary fuel tank the mini one uh, mainly because it was causing me kind of a lot of problems i didn't want to reach back by a hot motor and cut the fuel off and crap and every time i cut it on it kept uh kind of overfilling this and it was also leaking a little bit right there and it would be about halfway then it would cut out and it wouldn't do anything else so I just took the whole thing off and just made a simple fuel cut off right there and I think it's a lot more reliable. But I'll leave the video idea out there just so if any of y'all want to have some kind of auxiliary fuel tank, you can. The biggest thing I've probably done on this tractor is I've actually put a 6 inch engine pulley up there with a 93 inch belt. Which I probably need to get a 92 inch but 93 was all the store had. But luckily with my stupid glare on the light, with my adjustable belt tensioner, I can adjust the slight right out and run multiple belt sizes. And the back pulley is a five inch, so it is about, you know, a little over one to one, which is uh, perfect for me. With the old five inch on there, it would do about 18 miles an hour uh, with the bypass governor, which that was pretty good. If some of you noticed from my other video that I welded the stupid pulley down low, it was a mower deck drive pulley swapped to the top. I kind of welded that wrong, too, a little too low, and it was not running true and they kind of put the belt out of alignment so i might as well just buy a new one and when i bought a new one i might as well just go a little bit bigger that is full clutch and that pulley just clears it there's a little bit of self-clearing going on it's barely barely touching it but you know it works perfectly fine so for those of you wondering if you could put a six inch engine pulley on these ayp chassis you can it's probably the biggest pulley you can put on there without severe modifications you know they can see the adjustable belt tensioner a little bit better with the bypass governor, I'm guessing does about 20 to 21 miles an hour, which that's honestly plenty fast enough when I want to go on this thing. Um, I'm happy with it the way it is. I got a good low range first, second, third, and a good fourth, fifth, and sixth high range. I think anything over 20 miles an hour is just ridiculous because I don't know about you, but if you've ever driven a lawnmower off road and through the woods, uh, especially with no suspension, it is not the most pleasurable thing to ride. But at the same time, you get put in a different position, you know, when you're riding these things. Because especially if you go up hills and stuff, you have the tendency of falling over and crap. It's fun just to lay out on the clutch and go crawling with it and just kind of ease over obstacles. And under the seat uh, and the trunk. Uh, this flashlight my granddaddy gave me, uh, we'll have a little look at that in a minute. I got a spare belt sitting in there. It's a little bit bigger, but whatever. I got a screwdriver, some uh, extra oil. Actually, this is 10W30, it's not two-stroke oil. No, I would not put a flashlight this huge in there. It's actually the perfect place to put stuff in. So you got your zip ties in there. I got some pliers right here. I got an Allen key thing right here. I got a measuring tape here. Got like a pocket knife thing right here. Um, you can always put too many zip ties in there. I got my emergency pull starter in the back right there and uh, I couldn't remove the silver piece, but you know what? I made it fit and it worked perfectly fine. And I had to wrap this with Gorilla Tape because it was starting to fall to pieces. So yeah, it's a perfect little storage compartment that you can have. It's definitely different driving this than a four-wheeler, which makes it fun. I like both four-wheelers and off-road lawn mowers. I know everybody kind of argues with each other online about which is better, but honestly, whatever you think is better, just roll with it. And I mainly grew up with four wheelers just kind of recently. I'm kind of getting into the off-road lawnmower thing because 
it's cheaper you know you can find parts laying around and just make it work as best you can and that's pretty much what this hobby is all about see i got 17.1 hours on it nice low idle So I've been riding this uh, mower for a good while and uh, it did it before but the belt came off again and it was kind of rubbing against the pulley and see if you can focus on that. Yeah, the pulley was kind of chewing into the belt. So belt, belt retainers is clearly something I got to work on. Um, see one there uh, and the other one kind of crappy but i just had to throw something in place but that's the whole thing with this you know off-road lawnmower uh thing it's just learning and learning and learning sorry for the glare but you know there's nothing i can really do about that but anyway let's see how it's going to crawl up here first gear no problem whatsoever Right here is an old Volkswagen Doom buggy, just sitting here, three speed, uh, yeah, Boxster four cylinder engine. Uh, it hadn't been running for a couple of years, we usually run it every year, but it's been sitting, the car bearish probably all screwed up. But at some point in the future, I'm going to definitely redo this thing and make it great again. So 
but yeah, there you have it, the off-road lawnmower. Uh, it's definitely done very great. All I really need to do is just, um, dang, put some different belt retainers on there because, you know, the belt just kind of flies off of there sometimes and, you know, screws me over, which had done that out in the middle of the woods one time, but no big deal. I just had to pop it back on, but it's kind of annoying. It doesn't do it all the time, but, uh, you know, if it comes off, that can be annoying. Uh, the rear pulley's fine. I need to make the, uh, retainers mainly on the front pulley. The only downside really I can see with the mower is that you don't really have any suspension, um, but it's definitely a different experience. It's definitely uh, a fun, it's fun in its own way, I will say. I definitely have fun on the mower, you know, just going around, especially when it's raining and, you know, you got slick tires and powers of traction and you can just like, spin around in the yard. You can do that with a four-wheeler as well. Um, so yeah, I like both four-wheelers and off-road lawn mowers. They both got their own category. Um, I mainly grew up with four-wheelers, as I said before. I'm just kind of recently getting into the off-road mower thing. You know, you can just kind of throw parts you have laying around the garage and make it work. That's kind of what I like to do. But it definitely puts you in a different seat when you're off-roading because uh, you really got to watch what you're doing because, uh, as I found out, it's a lot easier to crash a lawnmower uh, than a four-wheeler by any means because, you know, you also got a manual clutch you got to deal with and, you know, you're constantly moving the lever to change gears. On some models on four wheelers, you know, you can shift shift gears or they're automatic, uh, but you don't have a manual clutch on a four wheeler as you do with a lawn mower. And you don't have an actual steering wheel uh, as you with a lawn mower. But you know what? They're both fun. I know some of y'all are gonna say, why don't you put like some more aggressive tires on the rear end? Um, I kind of want to, but at the same time I don't. It's kind of weird. The thing is with grippy tires, yes, I mean, they're gonna go through Pretty much anything you go through it's fun drifting and sliding the back end around uh, i don't know about you but that's just really fun doing that and kind of doing donuts and stuff uh that's that's fun but if i get a good deal on some cheap uh uh more aggressive tires uh with the rim and everything on it i have on the side then i might do that and just have like a slick set and then put on a more aggressive set also i've used this thing for work you know i had to load axes and bush axes and stuff like that on the back and haul some logs off and everything. All right, so, uh, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, something's going on with the motor. It's riding around and then... Hmm. All right, so it's the next day. I fixed the problem while the mower was running like crap in that bit of footage right there you just last saw. Um, here, let me show you. The biggest problem was, was that the carburetor jet is pushed in it's kind of a weird design and it fell out and that was causing it to have way 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 too much fuel um, so i actually put it on the inside going down so there's no way the jet can fall out of there and i've had this problem happen before which is really annoying i don't know why i designed it like that but whatever hopefully the way i put it in there it should not come out again and apparently it must have filled the cylinder up because I took the plug out and it looked, you know, very dark and nasty. So I cleaned it out and put it back in. And just for fun, with the ignition off, I spun the engine over and I didn't get it on film, but it just shot a huge amount of water out and just splashed like that whole gas can, everything. I mean, it was, it was probably the most amount of liquid I've seen come out of an engine. You know, I spun it to it, nothing else came out. Then I put the plug back in and I did check the oil to make sure there's no extra fuel getting in the uh, oil and it still looked like it had the same level in it, which is perfectly fine. So uh, apparently what that means is that the rings aren't bad. The rings are sealing up pretty good and there was no blow by, no extra fuel that went into the oil, which is a good sign. But the reason the air filter is off of it, because as I said before, I was going to paint it and I did. I painted it uh, black to kind of blend in a little bit better because I didn't like the green. It looked kind of too Christmassy or whatever. Red and green just don't go together. So I painted it black and hopefully that should look good. All right, so I've been kind of messing around with the belt system. I finally got something to work. Got that on there and that on there. Hopefully it's gonna work. Not only does the air filter look a lot better, but I also redid the vent. Basically, this is a grease fitting. I drilled a hole, screwed the grease fitting in there, took out the internals, and run a uh, teeny tiny piece of fuel line to a like a weed eater fuel filter so that way if it does go up it would have to travel 90 degrees into this filter and i kind of cut a little bit out here so it will still allow it to vent properly 
And one of the biggest changes, I didn't address this before, but I'll address it now, is the hood mount. This hood mount on this side completely broke the plastic area around here. And this was just completely broken. The only thing holding it in was this little plastic piece right here. And this part is steel, this is plastic. Don't know why they designed it like that, but somehow they did, but I just gotta make what I have work. So what I did was I kept the same original hood uh, mounts right here, and these right here are steel gussets that you would put on like lumber or boards to kind of gusset things in place. So I got, you know, a couple of these and a couple of those, screwed it through, screwed this together on here, tried to get it as lined up as I possibly could. This is a center support to kind of help join them together because otherwise they'll be completely independent. And I did the same thing on that side right there. And with the hood down, you can see my bolts right there. These holes I actually uh, drilled to put a zip tie through it and hold it together that way before I done this modification. And just so you know, it doesn't work. So that's why I did this modification right here. And I think it also kind of adds an extra bit of detail to the front end, because you know the front end does look very plain. But yeah, now, that hood mount is much stronger. So that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know some other modifications you recommend for this mower or any modifications that you have done differently or you think I should do. Let me know all that in the comments. I do have one more thing or one more big thing I'm gonna try on this. I'm not gonna reveal it just yet. Uh, you have to wait for the video to come out on that or a community post or something like that. But whatever, you'll see. So hope you liked this video. If you did, click on the other buttons or YouTube or say to click. If you didn't like this video, you can go thumbs down twice because two is better than one. Three more doesn't work. That doesn't count for likes, as we all know. And y'all should see me in the next one.